watching Morning at NTV. A very good morning. We're glad you're still with us here on Morning at NTV. Now let's transition from what was no doubt a very brilliant uh, submission from uh, the young girl. Mm -hmm. Inspiring statements there and of course something that uh, the girls out there should pay attention to. The fact that she was here and able to speak makes her a leader. That was very powerful indeed. Now let's transition from uh, girl rights to uptake of insurance packages in the country. It's understood that uh, there are still struggles and challenges when it comes to uptake of uh, insurance uh, packages by Ugandans, but that is something that can be worked on. We shall be joined very shortly by an official from uh, the Uganda Insurance Association who will be helping us understand how far we are, but how the manufacturers and industrialists are also taking on this uh, particular one. Annette Katusime is the Market Development Manager at the Uganda Insurance Association. A very warm welcome to the program, Annette. Thank you, Chris. How's your morning? It is lovely. Okay. I'm so glad to be here today. All right. At the Uganda Manufacturers Association uh, Trade Fair this year, mm -hmm. there was talk of uh, the fact that some manufacturers and traders may be reluctant to take up insurance packages they shouldn't be reluctant that is something of a misnomer but mm. we live an, in a country and an economy that keeps giving mm. and giving new things that shock us mm -hmm. where are we in as far as the trade fair is concerned and mm. Uganda investment I insurance rather mm. authorities uh, take on it all right yeah. great um, this year the Uganda insurance association participated mm. in the Uganda International Trade Fair organized by the Uganda Manufacturers Association. Yeah. Now, um, we participated both as a sponsor and an exhibitor. exhibitor yeah. Yes, I'll just mention something briefly about um, the Uganda Insurers Association before I mm. tell you how the whole experience was. Okay. Now, the Uganda Insurers Association is an umbrella body an organization that brings together all insurers. Um, we have a membership of 37 members. Uh, these members include insurance companies, reinsurance companies, and microinsurance companies. Mm. Maybe just a brief about how the insurance industry is. We do have the regulator, mm -hmm. we have associations, we have the training college uh, for professionalism, and then we have mm. members and service providers. Thank so you. that gives you just an overview of how the insurance industry is structured. Now. At the Uganda Insurers Association, our role is really to promote uh, insurance business uh, development among its members, That's but right. also look out for the public mm. uh, to ensure that they get sound and professional services from our members. Mm. And we do this through quite a number of ways. Uh, sensitization of the public in regards to uh, insurance, the concept of insurance, why should they care about insurance? That's right. uh, we also do a lot of lobbying and advocacy for favorable policies in regards mm -hmm. to trade, uh, business operations, especially in the financial services sector, That's right. uh, in regards to risk management. Uh, we do share information, we do a lot of research and share information. I will be um, sharing uh, shortly later on on the number of research studies that we've conducted so far mm -hmm. and the findings mm -hmm. uh, from those. Um, what else? I think, yes, for now um, we do share information, we do um, advocacy, we do sensitizations, of course, and encourage members to share businesses. Okay. Now, our participation in the Uganda Manufacturers Association was really as to, to to push that the information that insurance is an enabler mm. to business growth. That's right. Right. Um, most times we look at insurance as for the rich mm -hmm. or, or as a luxury, um, as and when I have some extra money, that mm -hmm. is when I'll take up insurance. Mm. So this time we were there to show and to engage with the people. Um, try to understand what exactly they understand by insurance, mm. um, what gaps are out there, but also in regards to manufacturers, mm. to try and show them that this is a concept that you need mm. to try and grow your business. 
Maybe it's very shocking that mm. uh, you are telling manufacturers to take on insurance when uh, I have predominantly known industrialists and manufacturers to be people who know the risks in business mm -hmm. and wouldn't need a lecture on mm -hmm. insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps is it a case of a, a particular sector in manufacturing, say for example informal sector that is reluctant mm -hmm. or we are talking about the big industrial uh, players, especially when you talk about, for example, Mkwano. Mm. I wouldn't expect Mkwano to be <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So who exactly mm. uh, forms this reluctant uh, segment? Mm. Okay. Now, um, the manufacturing sector mm. really has been largely a biggest contributor mm. to uh, the, the, the business we write in the insurance industry. That's right. um, I'll just comment those all those that insure, mm. but we still have a big percentage that does not insure. And that varies mm. from some of the big ones to s many of the small ones. Of course, mm. the small ones doesn't go without saying. Mm. Um, so most, back to the question you asked, which sector, which, which if se are we yeah. targeting uh -huh. a sector? No, it's, it's not really a certain sector, mm. but it's more on, remember I mentioned that we do our business through uh, sensitizing the public, but also working with partners, mm. other stakeholders, yeah. like uh, uh, government parastatos, um, private sector associations like the Uganda Manufacturers Association. Mm. Now, the Uganda Manufacturers Association has a plat gave us a platform to be able to reach out, not just to a certain sector, mm. but through the different, that all, all their members. Right. Now, they're categorized in different uh, uh, sectors, the informal, mm. the SMEs, the large ones. Mm. So all of them, we were able to interact with all through the B2B engagements, the policy engagements, mm. of course, as the, uh, also the trade share, the trade fair, right. um, the exhibition engagements. All right, allow me slip into the shoes of uh, people who might be afraid mm. of insurance mm. because of uh, the stories they hear, especially when it comes to recovery of assets uh, when there has been loss. Mm. Uh, there is a tendency or uh, a truism that insurance companies tend to make it hard mm. uh, for clients mm. to recover some of what has been lost. For example, they question there could have been an, uh, a hidden intent mm. in causing loss mm. in order to get money. That is some one of the factors that makes some people reluctant. How have you addressed this? Yes, okay. All right. So I'll answer it in two parts. Mm. Right? First is why and under what circumstances do we take out insurance? Okay. Right? Mm. From there then we'll get to the claiming part. Mm -hmm. Right? Now we take out insurance when uh, because, um, okay, before we take out insurance, any business owner mm. or any person, their purpose really is to survive and thrive, right? That is right. Now, as businesses as well, they want to make profit mm. and survive and stay mm. in business. Mm. So the most important thing to a business owner or a manufacturer is uh, the profits. And to make profits is you need resources. That's and right. these resources include people, the products, that can be the real products, the stock, mm. or the raw materials. Mm. Uh, it also includes the pricing, how are you pricing, and that speaks to what uh, many factors, including your inputs, but also the risks in involved in you producing that product. That's right. uh, but also um, in the distribution, which mm. we call promotion. So as the insurance industry, we offer uh, a cushion in case to this manufacturer or business owner, mm -hmm. uh, in case, because this is something that is very important to them, mm -hmm. the people, their products, and many others. So I'll stick to the people and the products for okay. now. Yeah. So as, um, as a business owner or a manufacturer, if I have, my, one of my biggest resources is people. I need the people to be happy, to be able to get maximum uh, productivity out of them. Mm -hmm. And how do I make them happy? I want them healthy. They come to work, they're not worried about getting sick and not getting treatment, mm -hmm. or their family is getting sick and not getting treatment, and that's where medical insurance comes in. Yeah. But also, um, if I come to work and I know my employer has a workers' compensation policy, in case I die, 
while employed mm. or in the course of my engagement with this employer, I have the peace of mind that, you know what, I have some bit of compensation. If I die mm. or if I break my legs, there's some bit of compensation. So you see, this resource is already being taken care of by insurance. So that's where insurance comes in. But also for the products mm. and raw materials. Um, we have stores where you've stored your materials and your stock. And in case of a fire, you're sure that if you've taken out insurance, mm -hmm. um, because sometimes when there's a fire, you really, like if it raises everything down, you lose everything and it will take you like a year or so mm -hmm. to get back. Yeah. But also it will be uh, really frustrating. Um, you have to borrow money, you have to, you know, fundraise to get back. Mm -hmm. But if you've taken out an insurance policy, you will be able to get to at least 90%, of course, removing depreciation and if you cost here and there, mm -hmm. at least 90% so that you're able to, if it was, going to take you a year to get back mm. it will only take you like a maybe months. a few months to get yeah. back so that those are the advantages and that's where the insurance comes in mm. so when it comes to claiming now you see this is what is important to me mm -hmm. and i i am worried that this event will occur this loss this uh, risk will occur and i will lose everything i i own mm. so i'm like you know what i have two options either have money on the side whereby i take care of this loss mm. or when it happens, I transfer it to the, before it happens, I transfer it to the insurer. If it happens, the insurer comes in and pays. So we get into a contract with an insurer. Mm. That means then there are terms and conditions that govern this contract. There are th declarations that have to be made, things like that, right? Mm. So when it comes, when a, a loss occurs and an event and, and you have a claim, mm. it is, there are always um, procedures on how to claim. Now, and I'm, I'm coming to, to, to your question of people say they, they delay to pay or mm. they refuse to pay. Or they and there is what appears to be a deliberate attempt. A deliberate to attempt to not to pay. Yeah. Um, we've noticed, and, and this is a pain to us as insurers. Sure. Yes, and we're asking ourselves, why, where is this conversation, where is this coming from? Mm. We tried, and at the Uganda Insurers Association, we've, we've done... Uh, research we've done a survey mm -hmm. uh, with casita members and affiliates yeah. trying to understand insurance coverage and the gaps mm -hmm. now in the insurance coverage some of the questions we ask is the experience when it comes to claiming mm -hmm. and uh, in the interviews we've had in-depth interviews and of course the questionnaire ones but when you have a query even at the exhibition we got some queries sometimes you when you try and go deeper to understand what exactly happened most of these people are not it's 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 just a misconception oh i had it's not me i had <laughs> so we've had that mm. but also for those that have had uh, honestly mm. when you look for the evidence and and my my ceo keeps saying if if you if whatever point you're putting across uh -huh. you, you need evidence to evidence back based, it up yeah. otherwise you're sharing opinions okay. so um of course research is still ongoing mm. we're trying to ascertain because that's the perception out there but is it true mm. how do we address it uh, if you go to insurance companies, you'll see that you look at the amount, like when it comes to payment of claims, really, mm. when there's a fire, you've heard of the big industries, right? Mm. Or the mattress industries, and they've been compensated. So in most times, uh, when it comes, it's not a deliberate effort. Mm. There's no evidence to support that. Okay. For those that have, that we've investigated and found that, or oh, they were saying, oh, my claim is taking this long to not be paid. Mm. There's an insurance tribunal at the Insurance Regulatory Authority where most of, of, of the issues, where there are issues, you always investigate and you find out most times there's a breach somewhere or there's a misunderstanding somewhere which always can be addressed. So um, the thinking that it is a deliberate attempt by insurers not to pay, that is not true mm. maybe it's uh, scientifically. Maybe it's based on the amount of time it takes to, for example, uh, do the claims and actually be able to recover or be paid out so that you can begin the process of uh, uh, business rebuilding. It could be exactly yeah, where that, that is. is true. And then uh, mm. also when somebody has to state and uh, certify the cause of an accident mm. in cases where it is pretty clear mm. that something has happened and there is loss. It mm. is the same thing people grapple with. If you have, uh, for example, uh, been involved in an accident and uh, uh, God forbid somebody is dead, the body has to be taken to the post, post for post-mortem. Mm -hmm. And somebody's wondering, 
that's a been a road accident. Mm -hmm. So what's the postmortem for? Mm. So they be asking questions mm. if it is a fire. Mm. If it is an accident, mm. there it is, you mm. can see. Mm. Why are you asking me too many questions? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes, let me transition yes. from uh, the insurance in general and then talk about uh, increasing efforts. You talked about research and the research and findings that you have with you. Mm. You'll be sharing with us uh, pretty shortly. But marine cargo insurance. Yes. What I know right now is that government is losing a staggering $150 million dollars on an annual basis mm -hmm. to foreign insurance companies mm -hmm. and there is effort or a new policy shift that will require local insurance companies to take on this mm. just give us an update on that yes um so m really what the government is trying to do is uh, and also as the as the insurance mm. uh, industry uh, we are trying to provide convenience mm -hmm. really to our members of course uh, uh, being cognizant of the amount of the, the premiums that we are losing to foreign insurers That's but right. mostly it is a uh, to provide convenience to importers mm. in regards to when it comes to uh, ob obtaining compensation yeah uh, obtaining uh, uh, appropriate coverages mm. and benefits mm. you know when you're getting a cover from here when I'm buying something from a shop uh, near home, it's easier for me to look and say, okay, I'll take this, I'll not take this, mm. than online. You understand? Ah, sure. Yes, so we're trying to... Co <laughs> There's to also receiving what you didn't order yes, for. Yes, what you didn't <laughs> order for. So the convenience to the importer, yeah. especially, is very important. Mm. And in, in, in the whole uh, life cycle of importing, from the time of getting appropriate coverage mm. to the time of claiming. But mm. also to ensure that premiums are retained locally, which will span business growth, mm. uh, economic growth uh, of our country. Okay. Yes. Okay, you're mm. going to have to make the research findings in mm. your very last remarks, and then we shall sign out of this interview. You spoke about some research that you guys have undertaken. Mm. Just share with us. Okay. That all right. Um, so um, very soon we are going to uh, publish uh, and have a stakeholder engagement where we'll officially release these findings. Mm. Uh, but preliminary, what has come out is, uh, and this speaks to why uh, the Uganda Insurance, Insurance Association is uh, taking this deliberate effort to get out there and have a conversation about mm. insurance and why it matters That's and why you should care about insurance. Chris, yourself, you enjoy insurance, I'm very sure, when you get sick, when your car, uh, you, when you get into an accident. So the preliminary findings we found is mm -hmm. that when you ask people if they know about insurance or if they've heard about insurance, they'll say they do. When you ask deeper, when you go ask a follow-up question, then you realize, <laughs> ah, I saw an advert. Um, they do not understand mm. that there's uh, the different types of insurance, mm. life insurance, non-life insurance. They call education, there's education insurance. They yeah. call it education insurance. Mm. But education insurance is life insurance. Life insurance. So that, those kinds of conversations where we are discussing what insurance really is, what why you should care about it, and in case of uh, a claim, what you need to do. Mm. So um, just to conclude, mm. I would like to encourage anyone who has had an experience uh, with insurance, mm -hmm. good or bad, always share with us, right? Mm. Uh, but also, if it's a good experience, share with your colleagues, That's because right. that is how we'll uh, deal with this misconception of, oh, mulibabi, insurers do not pay. <laughs> uh, but also... <laughs> Um, Interesting, right? Yes, yes. Uh, that is uh, one of the ways that we will uh, try and understand mm -hmm. uh, uh, the benefits of insurance. But also our promise is on uh, uh, the, the, the peace of mind, delivering okay. a peace of mind to you. So the Ghana Insurance Association is located at Akashia Avenue, mm -hmm. Insurer's House. Um, you could uh, also check out our website, www.uia.co.ug. And our toll-free number is 800 10 50 50. All right, thank you very much. Anit Katusime, Market Development Manager at Uganda Insurance Association, for the perspective. I hope you can roll out something that is more conducive, especially when it comes to school fees. That <laughs> is a headache. Let's stay with us. Our Kickstarter discussion is coming up, and we shall be discussing factionalism within the opposition. Is it by design or a natural process of growth? I'll be right back. <laughs>